Now let's see tuples. Tuple is used to store collection of values, just like list and dictionary that you have seen. Tuple also stores multiple values, collection of values. But the main difference is tuple is unmutable, which means uh, you can modify a dictionary or you can modify a list. We have seen how to modify them. But in tuples, you cannot modify them once you have created them. You can only create them once and use them many times. But if you try to modify, you are going to get an exception. Later, we will see what exceptions are. But in general, if you try to modify it, you are going to get exception. Now, here I have taken a small tuple here by the name names. And I have entered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 strings in, in it. So here a tuple is a collection of 5 strings. You cannot change them. You can only use them. right? So for example, if you want to access what is present in the first index, indexing will always start from 0 in any programming language. So, But first index is Santosh. If I try to print what is names of 1, then it is going to show Santosh. You can access them, access it like that. Just like how you access an array, you can access the elements of a tuple by using indexing. Okay. Now, there are only two methods available on it. So, one is count and other one is index. So, let us see count. So, count is going to return number of times a specified value has occurred in the tuple. For example, if I write count of Ravi, then it is going to give me number equal to count and if I pass Ravi, it is going to give me a value of 2 because Ravi has occurred 2 times. Right? Ravi has occurred 2 times, that is why it is giving me a value of 2. Similarly, there is one more method, index. Index is used to find the first occurrence of a specified element. So, for example, if I try to find out what is index of Ravi, it has occurred two times, but it is going to give me the first occurrence where Ravi has occurred. Got it? So the index of uh, Ravi first time is zero. That is where we got zero. Okay. Thank you. Hi, a mathematical set and Python set both are similar. So repetitions are not allowed. If same element is repeating two times, it will only be present once. It will discard the repetitions. And the second thing is there is no ordering. You cannot say that uh, you know element of zero is this, element of one is this, because the order keeps changing. When we print the elements, uh, every time you will get a different order. Okay. And also, when you add a new element which is already existing, that will be deleted automatically. And there are various methods available on set. Okay, uh, listen one thing here. Whenever you are trying to learn any object in Python, there will be various methods associated with it. How to know what are all the methods associated with it is, you can go to docs.python.org where you will get the list of all the methods available and you can have a look at it and uh, the documentation is also present there. Here we are trying to show you some of the methods available. Okay. So first is I have a set. So how do you write a set within curly braces? Just like in dictionaries, you are going to use curly braces and there are no key value pairs. There is only one value separated by a comma. So this is how you declare a set. Now, if I try to print this particular set, every time you will get a different order. Let's see that. So here, if you observe it, Balaji and uh, Santosh and Naveen, all these the places have changed. Again, if I print it, again it will change. Again, see that again it has changed, right? So that is why it is not an ordered set. It is not, it is unordered. Set by, by default is unordered. Okay, now let's see the methods. So one more thing I want to tell you is, sets are immutable in the sense, you cannot change the value of an element, but you can add or delete elements from a set. A particular element if you take, for example, if I want to change 
RAVI2, RAVI and DRA, it will not happen. But you can remove it and you can add a new element to it. That will happen. So now let's see the method add. It is going to add an element to the set. Names don't add. Let us say Ravi is already present. Let's try to add Ravi and see what happens. And let's run it. Let's print names. Now here you can see that even though we have added Ravi one more time, Ravi has occurred only once. Got it? Let's add a different name which is not in the set. If I am adding Kiran, Kiran got added to the set, but it is not added at the end, it is added at some random position. So that is how sets are different. Now clear is used to remove all the elements in a set. If you want to delete all the elements in a set, you can use clear. I have cleared it and now let's print it. It is deleting all the elements and now you can see that set is empty. It is simply saying set and then braces, which means set is empty. And now copy is a method which is going to create a copy, uh, give you a copy of the set which is already existing so that you can create a new set. So there is a set already existing. If I write copy on that, it is going to return that particular set as a copy and you are actually initializing a different set X with it. You can see that a new set X is created. And next is difference method. So difference method is same as A minus B that you do in sets, right? But here it is going, it is not going to alter the given sets, it is going to return you a new set with the difference in the items. For example, uh, here the difference is, you can observe that Ravi is present in both of these, that will be discarded and all the remaining elements will be displayed. So you have to understand one thing here, it is going to return a set, it is not going to change the original sets. Now you can see that intersection parts are avoided and only remaining parts are displayed. Okay, that is set different, normal set difference. And the next one is update, difference update. So difference update is going to remove the elements from the original list which are present in the other list. Which means it is actually modifying the set. It is not giving you a new set, it is modifying the original set. Now whatever name one have you have written, that set will be modified. Names one will be modified. And whatever are intersection, they are removed. Okay. So that is the difference between update and normal difference. Difference and difference update. Okay. And then discard method. So discard is used to remove a specified item from the list. If you want to remove, for example, Ravi, you can remove that. You are going to specify which element you are going to remove. You want to remove. Here we are not using indices, indices doesn't work on sets because they are not ordered. So if I want to remove Ravi, I can use discard Ravi and if I print it, Ravi is not present there, got it? An intersection is similar to mathematical intersection. But here a new set will be you know, returned without uh, using the original sets. A new set will be re returned. <coughs> so
which will contain intersection between both these edges. So we are actually capturing that new set into X. So you can see that intersection is Ruby and you are seeing only Ruby there. So only intersection part is going to be present and the remaining elements are removed. And intersection update is similar to difference update where you are going to change the uh, original set. It is not going to return a new set, it is changing the original set. For example, names one dot intersection update names two. Now names one will be modified. Now you can see that only intersection part is present in names one. So all the elements are deleted, all the remaining elements are deleted. And if disjoint, it is going to return either true or false. If both of them are having intersection, then it is going to return false. If no intersection is present, then it is going to return true. Uh, the output of this is a boolean value. So z is a boolean value here. Z equal to names one dot disjoint names two. Now it will return if it is, if intersection is present or not. You can see that it is returning false because there is intersection between these two sets. Ravi is present. And each subset is also going to return to you a true value or false value. It is a Boolean value which is going to be returned based on whether the given set X is a subset of Y or not. If X is a subset of Y, then it is going to return true. Otherwise, it is going to return false. Here, X is a subset of Y. You can see that ABC is present here, ABC is present here. X is a subset of Y. That is why we are getting true. And E superset is also same. Similar to E subset. It will check if the given uh, set is a superset of the other set. If it is superset, then it is going to return true. Otherwise, it is going to return false. In this case, X is a superset of Y. Therefore, the output will be true. Next, pop is used to remove an element, a random element from the set. If I write pop, some element will be deleted and we don't know which element will be deleted in, in advance, but some element will be deleted. For example, in this case, Navin is deleted. If I run it again, a different element will be deleted. Randomly, one of the elements will be deleted. And remove is used to delete a specified element, not a random element. You can specify an, an element that you want to delete and it is going to delete that element from the list, from the set. You can see that nothing is deleted. And now union. Union is just like set union. Okay. So it will return a new set which contains union on both the sets. For example, I am capturing the new set in Z and I am writing 
names one dot union names two then you are going to get a union a new set which is a union of both the sets and then update is similar to union only it is nothing different but here all, the only difference is the original set will get updated with both the elements with both the uh, you know sets so if i write names one dot update names two now names one will contain all the elements which are present in name one names one as well as names two you can see that all the names are present now in names one okay okay thank you